the only thing that's different from 2015 to now is our workers are worse off and our small businesses are having a harder time. So I wanna just take a second of personal privilege and back up slightly from where we are today, because for me, this conversation began in 2015 um, when I brought forth a um, referral to consider minimum wage, fair scheduling and sick and safe leave for the city of Olympia workers. Um, largely that was because of the 15 now movement was happening and there was a statewide conversation in cities, you know, being driven by cities about this, this minimum wage and the need for growth in Washington state. And I'm proud to say because Olympia was part of that conversation, we have the minimum wage we have now. Um, it's a lot better than it was. And it's because of our work. It's because we joined in that conversation. We made it live, <clears throat> excuse me, while also realizing that there's a lot of pieces in here that may or may not be in our control. And we are a small city and we don't like to be the first one in line at the Supreme Court, generally, right? I think the, the lawyer and the city manager are nodding. Um, so I worked with, with the 15 Now Movement to bring forth an ordinance that made it a civil penalty between a worker and, the, and their employer to look at um, wage, uh, to look at safe uh, scheduling and then or, or predictive scheduling. So somebody knows what their schedule is going to be in advance of going to work and, and then sick and safe leave, which we saw the state um, take care of the sick and safe leave portion in the legislature. Uh, the $15 an hour minimum wage uh, has been brought forth through an initiative. Um, fast forward to now. We have a request from uh, organized labor, so specifically the United Food and Commercial Workers um, 367 and the, I always get the order of the way they say the county's wrong, the the Lewis Mason Thurston, Mason Lewis Thurston. Thurston Mason Lewis. Thurston Lewis Mason Central Labor Council because Rochelle Martin has a signature on this letter in front of me. So I'm really glad that I didn't just look, I should have just looked. So anyway, um, so th these two organizations literally represent thousands of workers in our community. Um, and I, I, that's no small factor. And so I think it was uh, very important for us to listen when we received this request. Uh, and it was also timely because the finance committee had already been talking about in the work plan where we could fit it into the schedule this year. It was on our to be scheduled list. And uh, when this request came, it made sense to make the conversation live and see what it made sense to do. Um, and so the um, request of the for the workers bill of rights as it came to us, it, and, and I wanna address that um, I'm not putting any, um, from this point forward in my comments, I won't be putting any um, opinion or um or other facts just from the from the request but i but i should conclude my previous comment with the only thing that's different from 2015 to now is our workers are worse off and our small businesses are having a harder time and so i think it's really important that that conversation carry that mantra so the workers bill rights it asks for us to implement a seattle or king county minimum wage in the city of olympia which is um, listed here as 2029. And to consider that before hiring additional workers, employers must offer the existing employees more hours before they go out and hire, that they should have stable and predictable schedules, that there's good faith estimates of hours of time at time of hiring, including anticipated shifts, that you receive 15 days notice for a schedule, there will be predictability in that schedule. So if you don't end up getting those hours, there would be some compensation. Um, and that goes on to get into the details. They also are asking for something, and, and this is not something that was on the radar in 2015. And I think has largely come about since COVID though, would, you know, well, I don't, I don't wanna add opinion. I said I wouldn't, but um, is safe workplaces. And so they're asking for employers to, um, identify factors uh, that, uh, that put workers at risk of violence and outline methods to prevent violence. And so we talk about, um, they talk about active sh shooter scenarios and kind of, you know, go into looking for solutions that we've seen play out in workplaces and schools across the country with guns and other violence. 
Then they're also asking for protection against unjust terminations and, and having universal just cause protections against termination. And then they're asking for enforcement that makes the a burden of proof on employers. And it's a civil infraction between an employer and an employee, but also asking the city to consider uh, long term whether it could stand up uh, Office of Labor Standards Act to monitor and 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 work towards a broader enforcement than you might get from a civil um, a penalty. So I think I've responded to the mayor's uh, request without putting too much of my own opinion into it. We will not give up.